here at Chase Sapphire. We're going to talk to the cast and the writer-director of Ingrid Goes West, which premiered last night at the library. I was there. It played very well. I'd like to welcome the whole team up to the stage, if they can hear me. Come on down. Pla Pam Clementif, Billy Magnuson, O'Shea Jackson. Come on down. Lizzie Olson is coming. Elizabeth Olson to some of us. <laughs> Here they come. This is Billy Magnuson. This is Elizabeth Olson. The great Aubrey Plaza, who stars in the movie and is the producer of the movie. Pam Clementi and O'Shea Jackson, who you may remember from uh, Straight Outta Compton, and the writer-director, Matt Spicer. So this is a movie about L.A., no question about it. And it's a movie about Instagram. So I want you all to tell me how much your experiences on Instagram informed this script. Oh, me? Okay. Um, well, I love Instagram, and my co-writer Dave, uh, we both are huge fans, and we use it all the time, and so we were having lunch one day and talking about how much we loved it and also sort of how it brings out this darker side inside of us, you know, that there this these impulses of, like, you know, uh, that these other people are going on better vacations than I am, and they have cooler clothes than I do, and they're having more fun than I am, and, and I think we, it's this double-edged sword, and uh, we kind of wanted to uh, create something that would allow us to explore all these uh, conflicting feelings that we have about social media, and that's sort of how the Ingrid character was born out of this, you know, she's sort of the extreme version of all these negative feelings that we, that we feel when we use social media, and so we wanted to kind of take that to the extreme and see where that would go. So how did you bring Aubrey into this, and how did she find out about it? Aubrey, maybe you could, you know, tell us too. Um, I knew Matt socially, so I, we knew each other a little bit, and um, my agent sent me the script. I, that's how I found out about it, and I read it immediately, and I loved it, and then Matt and I got lunch. It's, <laughs> it's kind of like that's how it's supposed to work, but it doesn't usually work that way. It just happened to in this case, right? It's yeah, I mean, I, I think it was meant to happen. I don't know. Yeah. I, like, we kind of knew each other, but it, we didn't really know each other, but it just felt like a, it was like, oh, yeah, this makes sense. So how much have, have all of you uh, been involved with Instagram, and how much did you bring your own experiences with it to the project? O'Shea? I love Instagram. <laughs> you know, uh, I know Instagram, for me at least, uh, allowed me to pretend like I'm a photographer, you know, as far as filters goes. Shout out to X-Pro2 and Valencia. But, you know, it's a... Uh, you know, it, it's it's a scary it's a scary thing at times. You have to find the balance of what you want to share and what you want to keep private. I know personally, you'll never catch my location above my picture. You know, that's just asking for it. And if I post where I, I'm eating, I've probably already ate there and left. <laughs> you know, before I post it. And it's a uh, you know, this movie is so relatable because we all know that feeling. We all know someone who will take it to the extreme. And, you know, it, it's, it, it, it makes IGW, Ingrid Goes West. IGW. It, IGW. <laughs> it makes it a, a cult classic, really. How about you, Pam? Uh, my name is Pom, by the way. P-O-M, like the juice. Pom, wonderful. Uh, yes, what? what Instagram. Oh, Instagram. Um, yeah, I love Instagram. Uh, I'm Pominator on Instagram, and I have a lot of fun with it. And uh, for me, it's like a gallery of uh, my life or things that uh, uh, inspire me and, uh, and beautiful pictures. Or sometimes it's like self-promotion and it's kind of lame, but, you know, we all, you know, I mean, we all do that. We're all a little bit way, lame right? sometimes, right? 
Yeah. Elizabeth, you're you're the the model, the person th that Aubrey's character is looking up to and fantasizing yeah. about, and on some level falling in love with. And is I don't fair? have social media. <laughs> None. No. <laughs> That's why I think I was fascinated by this because I find it fascinating. I find the psychological obsession and how we're evolving as a society because of social media and because of this constant need of attention and likes and sharing. Um, I find it fascinating and I don't know if there's gonna be a backlash or if it's just gonna continue to be this way. So I just thought it would be like an interesting world <laughs> to dive into. So and your instinct is to protect yourself. Always. I'm very scared of everything. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that was a good answer. <laughs> So Billy, what is your experience with Instagram? Uh, yeah, it's great. Um, the, yeah, I just woke up. Uh, it's it's I don't know. It's just it's an interesting playground where it kind of uh, connects people, but at the same time it disconnects them. So it's a it's a double edged sword in a way. So did you encourage uh, participation in in the script? You know, to talk about the writing of the script and how um, you and your partner put it together. Well, we wrote the script, um, we sent it to Aubrey, and then, well, but during the making of the film, we definitely were, we were rewriting as we were going. There were a lot of scenes. I mean, we definitely allowed them to do a lot of improv, especially O'Shea killed it with some of his improvised lines that I wish I'd come up with. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think when we, we got such a great cast, it would be silly not to, not to trust their instincts, you know, especially me being a first time director. So I think. It was it was helpful for me to have such experienced people um, bringing ideas to the table, and and we definitely rolled with it, and 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 you know sh sort of shaped the story as we went. We rewrote some sort of major scenes at the end as we went because we knew the characters better by the end of the shoot, and so we kind of were looking at it like this isn't really, we, I don't relate to this anymore. It doesn't make sense with what we've been making, so. Um, yeah, we tried to stay, keep it loose, you know, keep it, stay open to new ideas all the time. Aubrey, uh, you're a producer on the movie, um, and you have another movie here that you're a producer on as well. Um, you must get a lot of stuff sent to you. <laughs> and, and you studied filmmaking, right? Yeah, I did. I went to NYU. Uh, so did I. For film school. Yeah. So, Go um, Violets. <laughs> <laughs> I think I went earlier than I also went did. to NYU. <laughs> right, so did you. USC. USC. <laughs> yeah, fight on, fight on. So, so, what brought you to producing, and why? Yeah. Why is that important? And and uh, the women on the panel. I mean, you get a lot of scripts sent to you. What was what was it about this script that made you really want to do it? I um I honestly read the script as just as an actor. I, I wasn't thinking about about it like that so much, but I had just finished The Little Hours and um, that's my first producing credit and it was it was, it was was more, um, I was learning, you know, I, I didn't really think, I, I wasn't, I didn't have a plan, like I didn't think like, well, I'm gonna be a producer now. I just kind of, it just organically kind of happened and I think with Matt's script, um, I just loved it so much and I, wanted so desperately to be involved in every step of the process, um, which is producing. So it just kind of worked out that way and um, and I really like it. So so and and as an actor looking at the uh, at the part itself, I mean what what these are great women's roles. This is these are strong women's roles. Stronger than many yes. scripts. Yes. I mean I'm al I always as as I always am looking for strong, um, dynamic female roles, and there aren't enough of them. Really wanted to do a comedy. <laughs> 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 and I thought it was gonna be really fun, and it was. <laughs> Palm? Yeah, it was uh, really fun. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> All right, so you were shooting in LA and y you got uh, a great look for the film. You got all the, de br you. talk about the design, the, co the costumes, the, the, all the style aspects of this that you had to bring into it. Well, we had, uh, Aubrey recommended actually two people who worked on her other film, The Little Hours, uh, Natalie O'Brien, our costume designer, and Susie Man 
is it Mancini or Mancini? She, Mancini. She Mancini. She says it could be either. Anyway, Susie Mancini, our uh, production designer, and they were both, you know, just incredible. Um, and like uh, Bryce Fortner was our DP, and he, you know, they're all way more experienced than I am, and. Uh, I really relied on them a lot, especially being my first film. They they brought so much to the table, and, and I think we really, you know, I had references that I would send them, and but they would always surprise me because I they they instantly just understood. And that's always the best thing I think as a director when you don't have to micromanage people. You can just say, I think I'm thinking of something like this, and then they just do it, and it's incredible. And I don't know how they did it on we you know on the budget that we had, and you know, there's so many locations, there's so many. Um, you know, we had to build this sort of high-end life for Taylor's character, or for uh, uh, Lizzie's character, and, you know, to do that on a budget, they they just, I don't know how they did it. I really don't. It was kind of magical. So, Aubrey, um, you had a, a part that was very, uh, I mean, it's, it's difficult to play someone who's crazy or disturbed or uh, stalking and, and make you like her and make you understand her. And I wondered how you all navigated those those lines? Um, well, I, I guess I w never approached it in, um, in a like, I gotta be crazy <laughs> way, but. Um, it was my fault. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I don't know. I, I think I just um, was so focused on figuring out what her problem was and what her um, relationship, you know, was with Taylor and, and kind of trying to focus on that kind of like human urge to connect with someone and to to mirror your identity on some, on you know, based on someone else and not have your own identity. And so I think I, I went down a lot of different tunnels, but I didn't, you know, necessarily like think to myself, well, I'm crazy. I more thought like, I just want to connect. Was there a scene that was particularly challenging for all of you? Was there one sort of nightmare, big, uh, anxiety-provoking scene? There's a scene where uh, she's explaining to me how she's just been assaulted. And we had to, like, muster up some real, like, you know, some, some inner emotions out of that scene. And when you're yelling for, like, two hours... You know that that's very strenuous, but other than that, it, you know the the characters and just the, the the cast. We had such a a high morale on set. There was never any anxiety, but the times where I had to be angry at Ingrid, or the times where I had to be angry at at um, I was just about to call you Nick, well, but Billy. You know that's those are the times where it it, it really were you know, hard on you as an actor because, uh, you know, these they, they, they've become my friends at, over this long period of time that I didn't want to curse them out. <laughs> That's so sweet. Thank you. Oh, but I do think you're crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so did, did Matt have you do things lots of different ways? Yes. Um, oh, oh, oh. Well, you were always... Aubrey was always asking for more takes. Like, we have, you know, we have six pages to shoot in a day and you know we'd have done 10 takes and she's like can we just do like five more and i'm like no we can't we have to move on she was never never satisfied which is good is why her performance is great but she we always had um a lot of options for aubrey and o'shea too o'shea always threw out a lot of different <laughs> for better for worse a lot of different you know <laughs> a lot of different versions i love um, dan pinto Everybody works kind of differently, though. I would say, you. I mean, Billy, you're less of an improv guy, I feel like, to me. But I don't know. That's what my <laughs> impression. Even he's playing I'm the feeling, sort of crazy terrible. explosive. Although you did terrible. have a couple of improv lines. But you, I feel like you're more of like a, you are more of like a classically sort of like, you're looking at it like the text and like the blocking and all these things and like, you know, that was sort of a workout for me as a director because I, I you know, you, I feel like you have more experience in the theater world. So that was interesting to me and you kind of approached it like that. Billy's so I don't know, crazy. for me it was interesting. You guys all kind of had different styles of working. So I feel like I had to adapt my style to each of your different styles when it was your scene. Yeah, I don't know. Just an interesting tidbit, maybe. <laughs> tidbit. 
but is it is it is it is it fun to rehearse and and play around? What was that so process? Much fun. Yeah. We got to make up the beginnings and ends of all the scenes. We stayed true to the script, but to also just like throw out alt lines. Like I think Aubrey and I would be making stuff up and laughing and like while saying it because we couldn't believe that our mind just like <laughs> made this thing come out of our mouth and we like hated ourselves for it. Um, so yeah, it was so much fun and I never really get to do that. I had the best time. Well, yeah, it it's funny when we fun. met, I remember I was, I asked you how you like to work and you were like, the one thing I don't like to do is improv. And uh, I like no, to No, I said rehearse. I was scared of it. Yeah, oh, okay, you were That's scared. That's different. Of it. <laughs> I was scared of it because I've never had to do it. But I feel like by the end of the shoot, you were like, you were like, wanted to do more. That's all you couldn't I get ever enough. Do yeah. Now, apparently. Yeah. It's like <laughs> you so much fun. You should do it because you're really good at yeah. it. Yeah. Guys, it was so you are. I love you guys. <laughs> I love you guys, too. <laughs> so how much did he contribute to Dan Pinto? Ooh. They're one and the same? Is that yeah, for sure. Uh, Dan is... Uh, how I got the role was um, <clears throat> me and Aubrey exchanged numbers. She said, I want you to read this script. This is the short version of this, because she'll kill me if no, I don't do it. No, I don't care. All right, she doesn't no, care. Don't. No, she doesn't it's care. Too long of a story. All right. But I text her, the first thing I text to Aubrey was, hey, it's Batman. So she thinks that's From me saying. a number saying, that I don't recognize. Yeah, just like, hey, and it's Batman. A couple days after, I had sent him the message. So it wasn't like the first thing on my mind. And I just an instantly thought, oh, he must love the script because he's calling himself Batman, which is the character. But no, I was just calling myself Batman because I'm obviously Batman. Turns out... <laughs> I Perfect never casting. sent him the script. Yeah, and she never sent me the script or anything. I just Batman just said life. that. So Dan was just really <laughs> me just morphing bits of Shay into and he's a screenwriter. I went to USC for screenwriting. You know, it was just too much too many uh similarities. So Dan Pinto and Shay can be uh considered one and the same. Except, we didn't uh, we didn't write it with O'Shea in mind, but it was funny because when we I remember we sat down, it was like this thing where every time we would we would discover more about you that was like the character in real life. So it was this bizarre thing, like, yo, know, you're a screenwriter, he's a screenwriter. You know, it was like yeah. constantly, you even joked at one point that we were, it felt, you felt like we were making a documentary about it's you. For sure a documentary based yeah. on me. And <laughs> Batman is the best superhero. I'm prepared to debate anybody in here. <laughs> but yeah, that's what it is. I heard that clap. I appreciate that. <laughs> so were you shooting digitally? And, and were you doing uh, a lot of reshaping in the editing room? We did shoot digitally. We shot on the Alexa uh, Mini, and we didn't. You mean reshaping like the color timing and all that stuff? No, 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 no. The the narrative, the the, the structure, oh. the you know, you had a lot to work with. Yes, we. There was a lot of stuff we cut out, so we cut out a lot and kind of. But at the end of the day, I think it all it helped the film. You know, we it's a process of whittling it down, so you hope to get to what the essence of the film is. And we actually did a day of reshoots that I think really helped um, shape Ingrid's character and, and, and help the way you, you know, helped set her up in a better way that I think helped propel the audience through the narrative a little bit more clearly and understanding what's driving her. Um, I think, I mean, I personally think every movie should do reshoots because I think you learn so much about your film as you're editing it, you're rewriting it, and, you know, it's, it's kind of a crime to feel like, I feel like you're always kicking yourself, why didn't I do that, why didn't I do that? And so it's great to have an opportunity to go back and, and fix your mistakes in some way. Did you show it to a preview audience? We did more of a of sort of friends and family kind of thing, but we actually, we storyboarded all the reshoots and then cut the storyboards into the film and played that version. And we had people come who had seen the previous version and we had people come who hadn't seen anything and they sort of unanimously were like, no, this is how, how it has to be. And so that we knew it was worth the, spending the time and, and energy and money to do it. It was last time, last night, the first time anybody's seen the movie. Uh, pretty nice much. Bad. Other than other than like maybe five people, yeah, it was like, it was the first time everyone's seen it completed version. We finished it last Wednesday. I, I think I was. <laughs> I'm the only one that That's saw scary. It in this group. Yeah. Like everyone else. Yeah. It's lit. So what was it like to see it with an audience? What was that like? I was sweating a lot for the first like 25 minutes, and then I kind of settled into it. Um, but it's great. I mean, the, the audience is the Sundance audiences are so generous with their laughs. So they, it was it was really it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
All right, let's open it up for questions. Um, raise your hand if you've got one. They were really angry at us because we were <laughs> they had asked for it weeks ago and we kept saying, well, it's coming, it's coming. But when I say finished it, we finished the DCP, which is the digital print, and but we and we had to like overnight it to them. It was a whole ordeal. But yeah, it was done done on Wednesday before <laughs> we were gonna screen. Anybody else? I'll follow you. <laughs> yeah, I'll follow him for yeah, sure. And then you'll get so many. Yeah. <laughs> How do you yeah. get more Instagram followers? Easy. <laughs> All right. I don't think that's what's important, man. Pictures yeah. of food. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you guys. I'm following him. I need you to write it. Somebody get him a piece of paper. I'm going to follow this dude. All the time. I'm busting a rhyme every time with this. What did you learn from your getting feedback from your cast? I learned to, I think if you hire the right people, you have to trust them because there's it's too big of a job for one person and i think there's too many things that go wrong on a day-to-day -day basis and it's like it was so great that's why i was i love these people because they oh i felt like they always had my back and they didn't let me make mistakes you know anytime i felt like i it was going down a wrong path they would say let's stop let's figure this out this is not this doesn't feel right you know and when you're directing and you're you're you know worried about the time and, and how many shots you have to do and all these things, you're not thinking about, or you're not always thinking about the bigger picture. And so it's helpful to have some people around you who you trust who can say, I think there's a, maybe a better way to approach this and to bring you the idea. And I think, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, when I was, I think, younger starting out, I think I had this idea that if I'm, I'm the director, I, I always have to have the idea, you know, if I'm gonna be a, an auteur or whatever. And I think that's ridiculous. I think, it, I think, if you're smart, if you take listen to the best ideas, then that makes you a smart person. That's what makes you an auteur. You always take the best ideas. So, I don't know. That's my philosophy. I, I know personally, uh, Elizabeth and Aubrey helped me calm down because you know, it, at the end of the day, it is my second film ever. So you know, I was nervous. I was nerding out because you know, it's, I've been a fan of Aubrey for a while, and like. It's Scarlet Witch, you know, like I'm hella like nerding the hell out because I just saw Godzilla and I'm like spazzing and they were so chill. And so, you know, I realized like, you know, it's just like I'm back at SC, you know, just kicking it with film students. And so, you know, once I let that let that down, you know, I was able to do me. Go ahead. Oh, wait, you didn't. Takeaway for women uh, from the film message. Oh. <laughs> okay. uh, that's a hard one. Yeah, because because it's not like we're trying to represent anything I ideal, and we're not trying to represent uh, something that is that is a conscious living conscience, good conscience. Consciousness. <laughs> um, so, I mean, to me, it's. I think it kind of hopefully can show people that it's a shared experience, um, feeling this comparing of lives and wanting more. Uh, the idea that everyone's kind of becoming their own uh, publicist or marketing genius or something and trying to sell themselves. And maybe seeing at the end of the day that that's uh, that maybe isn't the most important or, or mentally uh, helpful um, to your mind and soul. I don't know. I I agree, and I think <laughs> I think that's right. And I think that um, for me, it's also 
if there is a message, I guess it would be, f uh, f you know, focus on human connections. And I think the movie, for me, is all about the difference, you know, between trying to be someone's friend for the right reason or the wrong reason. So, and in the end, it's like she doesn't even realize that she's has a human connection with Dan because she's so focused on trying to have a connection with someone that she doesn't have a connection with. So it's like that that idea <coughs> maybe is a message, um, or maybe it's not. Oprah like Winfrey. There's a quote from <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. She said, always focus on what you have, not what you don't have, because if you focus on what you don't have, you'll never have enough. On that note, folks, nice. thank you all. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Hey, all, we're going to clear the room now and uh, bring in the next group. So.